Welcome back, Captain. How can I... Take care. I am pleased to inform you that we have arrived at the Labyrinth. Please be advised that the punishment for trespassing is execution. Please be advised that electrical storms on the surface of Tartarus make departure impossible at this time. Resident count is as follows. 3,071. Resident deaths, including but not limited to executions, are as follows. 1,684. Resident escapes are as follows. Zero. The interior can be chilly. Take a scarf with you, Captain. I would also ask that you leave your Captain's ID with me. In the... I can make the assurance that I will not leave with another Captain unless you do not return within 876,541,652 hours. Oh, speak of the devil. Captain, I am receiving a transmission from the prison. Attention, unauthorized spacecraft. This is a maximum security installation. Your presence here is an explicit violation of UDL corporate policy. You are hereby confined to your docking platform until a ticket detailing your crimes has been filed and notarized, at which point your vessel will be seized and you will be executed. I wager it'll take a bit longer than it takes you to lose your patience and storm out of your ship looking to get shot. To be honest, that'd make my job a lot easier. You come out, we shoot you full of holes, and then everyone goes about their day worry-free. Except you. You'll be dead. All right. I'm feeling generous. I'm transmitting the idea of a productive, law-abiding employee so you can see what one looks like before you die. Tartarus Docking Authority, signing off. Transmission terminated. Biometric ID received. Transferring data to external cartridge. How can I be of assistance? See you soon, Captain. A reminder to all crew members, there is only one
and toilet on the ship. Are you new here? Oh, no. Whew. I want place the labyrinth. Perhaps we should all meditate on that as we make our descent. Area sanitization assessment. The labyrinth on Tartarus. Task classification, easy peasy. Would you like Sam to tidy up this area? Waiting for confirmation command. Confirmation command, not received. Yeah? 
I don't want to know. Well, look. I'll be damned. I was prepping the studio for our announcement, and here you are as a bonus. And the convict. Uh, the vicar. You know, most people, once they're out of prison, don't seem keen on returning. Oh, I would go anywhere to see you fall, sir. And... Oh, uh, <laughs> I had heard you were dragging around a repurposed janitorial mechanical. My staff jokes that it's because you're a walking pile of refuse. Interactive database updated. The unique organic substance labeled Chairman has been classified as filth imminent for incineration. When you go off and get yourself shot, try to avoid taking one to the face. I'll want it recognizable to show to... My word! You've correctly identified the most recognizable man... It's a wonder what Phineas saw in you. Then again, he's an insane person. Thankfully, he's our insane person. Yes, he is an extraordinarily obstinate fellow, isn't he? Fine, he isn't working for us per se. Semantics, he'll come around. But that's between us. As far as my adoring citizens will know, we've turned a dangerous crackpot into a working-class man. It's a miracle! Oh yes, go on, wake them up, add more mouths to feed! That'll solve our starvation problems. I don't know what half-baked plans that simpleton in a lab coat has been leading you through, but it's done. It's over. Let me ask you something, Captain. Have you at any point thought about not fucking up our entire society? I believe we could ask you the same. I'm making actual progress towards stabilization and recovery. You're just getting in the way. Oh, right. This coming from the psychopath. We... You are a captain of action. I'll give you that. Look, I'm not an unreasonable man. If you manage to storm the castle, as it were, and make it out of here with Phineas alive... Ugh, I can't exactly afford more havoc than you've already caused. Fine. If you survive, you'll need someone to sell the rest of the board on your plan. about a blasted lab coat. Hey, Hold it right up. there! Difficult job ahead? Consider equipping a pack of Sam's Special Solvent Stain Out Remover. It's ruthless on residual blood splash. Everything in my life is at this point. I am... Captain, you have an uncanny... You've disrupted the balance of power. You've upset the natural order of things. 
You've introduced uncertainty, and there is nothing I despise more than uncertainty. I'm afraid I can't do that. You have a flair for subtlety. If you'd worked for me, you would have been the greatest fixer Halcyon has. For all your talents, I have no intention of dying on Tartarus, Captain. Not when the I admit I miscalculated the extent of your influence. The board's plan never accounted for you. I have Dr. Wells in my custody. Once I've secured his cooperation, I can move forward with the program. I can repair the damage you've done. Well, that's mostly correct. I take no pleasure in leaving you alone. I had a feeling you'd say that. This prison is equipped with an auto-mechanical warden. I've had it programmed to eliminate you on site and rinse your remains down. And don't worry. I will inform Dr. Wells that you died heroic.
Industrial stay. May you find peace in death.
You don't know how glad I am to see you. You did the right thing. Akande was a monster. Her death was much deserved and long overdue. And you, you lunatic, you broke into the board's own fortress just to rescue one doddering old man. You are absolutely out of your mind. And I can... I'm all right, thanks to you. Akande wanted my cooperation. I'm quite sure she would have beaten it out of me. You've broken the board's stranglehold on this colony, and you saved my life. But there's still so much we have yet... You and I are going to have to work harder than ever to save Halcyon. I'm afraid the situation is far worse than any of us ever anticipated. I would like nothing more than to celebrate this victory, but we have a... Earth has gone dark. We haven't received a single message in three years. Two years ago, the Earth's Directorate's frigate disappeared on their way back to Earth. We don't know what they discovered when they arrived, or if they arrived at all. Earth is only an idea to us, but that idea is the bedrock the colony is built upon. If people were to find out it's gone dark, the shock could be too much to bear. I don't want to imagine what'll happen once news gets out. Let's just keep this between us for now. We're in serious trouble, my friend. Do you know what this means for Halcyon? We can't rely on Earth for support anymore. We've been cut loose. We're... In yes, we do. You've done a marvelous thing. You've succeeded where anyone else would have failed, including me. We must begin the revival process immediately, starting with the hopes of brightest minds, and then we're going to fix this damn... We're going to need a leader, and I can't imagine a better person for... The chairman? Oh, I don't know why you let that... <sighs> when I revived you, I thought we were going to save this colony all by ourselves. But I was wrong. We can't save Halcyon on our own. We're all going to have to pull together, somehow. We are not a colony anymore. Our last connection to Earth has been severed. I don't know if we'll survive, but we're going to... The OSI teaches that everything in the universe happens according to the grand plan. But the stranger that arrived in Halcyon was an unplanned variable. From the moment he landed in Emerald Vale, his actions altered the course of history. The events on Tartarus brought about the end of the board's authority. But the board's mistakes would haunt the colony for decades to come. The damage they left behind would require the work of a generation to repair. Dr. Phineas Wells began reviving a handful of the Hope's colonists, engineers, scientists, technicians, and intellectuals. They were among the brightest minds the Earth had ever sent out into the stars. The Hope scientists and engineers woke up in a colony descending headlong into total collapse. With no way to return to Earth, they had no choice but to band together and devote themselves to the cause of saving Halcyon. The people of Halcyon were nothing if not hardy. In the absence of the board's authority, many of the colony's settlements banded together with a single purpose in mind, survival. Life was especially hard in the years to come. Some towns dissolved by attrition and starvation, but most of them found a way to carry on. In the years to come, Halcyon was forced to reckon with its newfound freedom. The board was gone, and for better or worse, the colony was responsible for its own destiny. Left unchecked, the war on Monarch consumed both MSI and the Iconoclasts. And when the Sulphur Cloud settled, only stragglers from both factions remained. Some found their way to Sublight, some to Terra II and some lived their final years fighting for food in the wilderness. 
In the end, only the beasts remained. Consumed by paranoia, Lilia Hagen took Sublight Salvage in a controversial direction, openly accusing board officials of an extraterrestrial conspiracy. One day, an accident at the Groundbreaker's docking bay silenced her forever. Time would tell if her replacement could keep the Sublight family together. Adelaide McDevitt replaced Reed Thompson as the leader of Edgewater. She and her followers transformed Edgewater in their image. Anyone loyal to Reed was pressured into leaving town, and those who stayed behind adapted to her way of life. Adelaide transformed the old cannery into a new garden. The nearby Edgewater Cemetery provided a convenient source of fertilizer. As for Reed Thompson, it was said that he lasted exactly two days outside the walls of Edgewater. Years later, a marauder was found in possession of his hat. June Lee Tennyson fought to protect the Groundbreakers' independence. While the board's influence faded, mechanical difficulties forced her to rely on parts that only corporations could provide. The cost was high, and time would tell if June Lee could balance the work with her aspirations for a better future. The rediscovery of the hope and the abandonment of the lifetime employment program forced Byzantium to come to terms with some uncomfortable realities about the state of Halcyon. While Byzantines were reluctant to surrender the luxuries they'd grown accustomed to, the board's diminished authority gave them little choice in the matter. Nearly everyone had to learn to make do with less. Some even had to get jobs. It was a dark time indeed. Life in Halcyon was sobering for Felix Millstone. The grand revolution he dreamed of never came. There was no great awakening for the colony, no celebrations in the streets. There was only the hard, desperate work of trying to repair a broken colony. Felix never had a head for numbers, but if there was labor to be done, he was there to help. Eventually, Felix realized that the work of a revolution was done with two hands. As much as he enjoyed his adventures aboard the Unreliable, the vicar known as Max eventually decided that it was time to move on, to live out the life he had sought so long to create. He knew there were many in the colony who carried burdens much worse than the ones he had struggled with, and he devoted himself to easing their suffering wherever he could. He only ever took up arms again to defend the defenseless. Unshackled from a lifetime of striving and fighting the universe and himself, Vicar Maximilian de Soto was finally at peace. Though Parvati eventually grew comfortable aboard the Unreliable, she never quite came out of her shell. She seemed to prefer the company of Ada to the crew, and she could often be found neck deep in cables and grease telling Ada funny stories from her childhood. While the colony fell into chaos, she found an island of relative peace with Ada, and they formed an unusual bond. She decided to remain aboard the Unreliable permanently as its chief and sole engineer. Nioka returned to Monarch to take another crack at making a permanent life for herself. She formed the Charon Group, a mercenary outfit of ragtag survivalists and wilderness experts. Anyone in need of a guide or just looking to throw back a beer and swap stories could find her camping on the trail or clearing an infestation. The SAM unit that accompanied you spread awareness of the product line's superior sanitation and maintenance capabilities across what was left of the colony. This led to a boost in SAM unit sales. Did you know that SAM units are the longest lasting, toughest acting cleaning solution in Halcyon? Minister Clark was released from house arrest and his contact with you gave him a sense of renewed purpose and vigor. Once it became clear that no help would be coming from Earth, he threw his considerable efforts and talents into helping Halcyon manage the crisis before it. Chairman Rockwell served as the public face for the changes in Halcyon to come. Whenever you needed strings pulled or a voice to sell a policy change, Rockwell was only too happy to oblige. As for Dr. Phineas Wells, 
he spent his remaining years in his orbital lab. Though he was always haunted by the failures of his past, he was determined to make things right by building toward the future. Dr. Wells was able to revive many more scientists and engineers than he first expected, thanks to the additional batch of chemicals you stole from the ministry. Wells never forgot about the human lives that were lost in acquiring these chemicals. The revival project was hard and painful work, but in the end, despite limited resources, over half the Hope's colonists were successfully revived. Even after Wells passed away, the Hope scientists and engineers worked night and day to pull Halcyon from the brink of collapse. Their efforts continue to this day, which may be reason enough for optimism. Dr. Wells laid the groundwork for the project to save the colony, but he would never live to see the fruits of his labor. He passed away a few years later. His work was carried on by the scientists and engineers he revived. Life will never be the same in Halcyon. It is widely agreed that the colony has a chance of stabilizing within a generation, owing to the hard work and determination of the surviving colonists. Recovery is a distant goal, and the path is long and uncertain. But the people of Halcyon carry on, determined as ever. And what about you, the unplanned variable in the history of Halcyon? You brought an end to the chaos on Tartarus and made Chairman Rockwell your own puppet, a role he was all too eager to play. The colony never realized you were the true power behind the new administration. By acting vicariously through agents and third parties, you controlled Halcyon from the shadows. As a result, Halcyon survived the turbulent years that were to follow. No one knows what's happened to Earth and no one knows what the future has in store for Halcyon. All we know for certain is this, the name of the unreliable and that of its intrepid captain will remain the subject of countless stories for years to come.